Before we begin Mass, please take a moment to silence your cell phone. If you have one of these papers, you can scan the QR code on the back, and that will pull up a worship aid for today. As we celebrate the sacrament of confirmation, please join us in singing our gathering hymn, number 566, Lift Up Your Hearts, number 566. Please stand.
taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to affection in our hearts, the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and
shadow and what the other must be removed from you, along with all acts. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another, for as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and made himself over for us, as a sacrificial offering to God for a fragrant aroma. Archbishop Thompson, the parish of St. Patrick from Terre Haute wishes to present to you its candidates for confirmation. Each candidate has participated in a period of preparation and prayer and comes today accompanied by a sponsor. It is my privilege to present to you at this time the candidates from St. Patrick.
Dr. Bishop Compton, I present to you the candidates from St. Mary of the Woods Village Church in St. Mary of the Woods Village. You stand. What have you stand? Relax, you guys stand. Yes. You are a little hesitant coming up, don't worry about it. You are a little hesitant coming up, I'll stop sure we're going to get presented to you. Did you know something that I don't know about? Do you like them? Oh, yes. Why? <laughs> They're entertaining. They're entertaining. They're entertaining. That's interesting. I love their enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. And their enthusiasm. Enthusiasm and eagers. Very good. Does the church going to be richer than the kind of people that this year? So they're ready. Very good. I want to thank you all. Seriously, I want to thank the candidates. Uh, I'm, I'm a chairperson for the U.S. Missions uh, Committee on Evangelization and Catechesis. I don't know how I can be the chairperson of anything, but I am. And one of the things we're working on is a document Pope Francis asked us for a ministry of catechism. So we're working on this document to get it uh, published, hopefully, this, this, about the end of this year. Uh, hopefully, if not by this year, early, early next year. But anyway, in that document, obviously, we're focusing a lot on our catechism and how important this ministry is, uh, uh, ministry that's coached so often, unrecognized, let alone unappreciated. So I want to thank you all for all that you do day in day out. When you pay a volunteer, uh, we couldn't do it without you. So I want to thank you all for that great work. Uh, they have presented these candidates. They have said that they're ready. The church will be richer. Family and friends, do you agree? Will the church be ready? Will, they, will, they be, will the church be better? Will they be fully initiated? Yes. yes. And we show them our affection and our affirmation. You all, you can be seated, yeah, please. I've been here now seven years in the Archdiocese, so I, I, I would imagine by now you've kind of got my, my routine down here, but in case you haven't, or there's any visitors, three things always in the homily for, for confirmation. One is, how is God speaking to us in the, in the, in the readings of the day on this uh, 19th Sunday? Secondly, these young people have written some wonderful letters. You know them very well. We know why the catechists said they were ready. And you know that because of their letters, it gives me uh, insight into their wonderful faith with their gifts and talents. And I want to share some of the snippets there. And then thirdly, I have a different theme every year. Those are the three things we're going to do. Uh, these readings are per perfect coming off of the Eucharistic Congress that we just had a, a, just a matter of weeks ago in Indianapolis. And as we continue this Eucharistic revival, we're still in a national Eucharistic revival. Just because we had the Congress at the end of, you know, back in July, it doesn't mean that, that it's all over. The words continue to build. They're looking, looking forward uh, to, to continue to do another Eucharistic Congress in, in a few years, by tw 2033 um, and whenever else. But again, along the way, how are we continuing to recognize the Eucharist as central to our lives, central to our, our identity, our understanding of who we are as people of God, as Catholics, in our identity and our mission, carrying on the good news of Jesus? And so we hear these readings with that very Eucharistic theme. In the first reading, Elijah is running for his life. He's running for his life because he, has, he is the last prophet remaining, the Christian prophet, and the people have been kind of meshed into a lot of paganism, a lot of secularism, and the people of God, people of God the, the, the Israelites, have lost their way. And so they got caught up in all this, all this paganism, all these other things. And Elijah has taken on all their false prophets and had them destroyed. And now the queen, Jeze Jezebel, is after, him, is after him. And so what we hear in this scene here today in the first reading is Elijah is running for his life, and he's wiped out, he's wore out, he he's, feels like he's up against the world, he has no, no energy left, he's basically asking to die. He's just basically, I'm just, he's, he's ready to give up. And so as he's trying to rest, he's trying to catch his breath, the angel appears and says, get up and eat. And Elijah gets up and eat, and then he goes back to sleep. He's just so worn out. But the angel, again, get up and eat. You're going to need, this. You're going to need your strength. You're going to need your energy. And so he's given the food provided by God so he can carry on his mission. And so we hear he goes 40 days and 40 nights going to this great mountain. Of course, 40 is, is symbolic in Scripture for us. We, need, we can think of Moses 
you know, um, with, with the Israelites 40 years in the desert. We think of Noah in the ark, 40 days, 40 nights in the flood. We think of Jesus in the temptation uh, in the desert right after his baptism, 40 days and 40 nights. We even have, we talk about Lent as 40 days. That number 40 talks about a transitional pilgrimage, a retreat. It's a spiritual moment in our lives. And so what's happening here, something spiritual is taking place in the life of Elijah. When he thinks it's all over, when he thinks he's, he's at the end of his rope, God is doing something great in his life still. Continue to call him as his prophet. Continue to have him proclaim the good news. To continue to call the people back to God and to, to fidelity. And he's given him that food and drink to do that. Then we have that we kind of put that with, connect that to the gospel, where Jesus in chapter 6 of John's Gospels continue what we call the bread of life narrative or bread of life discourse. We've had this going on for the last couple of weeks. It's like six weeks in a row. John's Gospel, chapter 6, is a powerful, is one of the most powerful scriptures, scripture passages that we have in all the Bible. It's probably also the one of the most challenging. Because in there, Jesus speaks about himself as the, as, the, as, the, as the bread of life. He speaks about the need for the people to embrace him, to receive him, to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Now that doesn't sound real appetizing. This doesn't sound like something that people wanted to hear back then. And so in the Gospel of John, something that we as Catholics today hang our hats on, so to speak, was very controversial in the time of Jesus. In fact, people walked away from him in droves over this teaching. Probably no other teaching he does has quite the same effect as this teaching on the need for his body and blood for salvation. And people walk away from him in droves. At the end of this gospel, at the end of this chapter 6 of John's gospel, Jesus will, be, it will show even his own frustration as he turns to Peter and the other apostles and says, do you want to leave me too? I mean, he's shown his own frustration, to which Peter responds, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. But notice that Jesus, even when they're controversy and they're murmuring, you know, they're saying, wait a minute, who is this guy telling us to eat his blood and drink his blood? Don't we know him? We know who he is. We know his family. And Jesus is pointing out, you don't know me like you think you know me. But notice that even when he gets the pushback, Jesus doesn't stop and water down his teachings. He doesn't say, oh, come back, I didn't mean it. Let me water this down for you to accept. Notice he doesn't do that. Even at the point of rejection, he stays firm how essential the Eucharist is in the lives of the people of God. And if he doesn't water it down 2,000 years ago, then we better not water it down today. This is the gift of salvation. This is the flesh and blood of Jesus. This is what people walked away from 2,000 years ago, and Jesus refused to water down what he was teaching then and now. How essential the Eucharist is in our lives. The body and blood of Christ, the soul and divinity of Christ. To walk away from it is to walk away from him. How could they then? How can we now? If we have faith in Jesus, in him as our in word and sacrament, then we can carry out in service the gospel. These young people today who are being confirmed, they are, fully, they're, they're completing the initiation process with baptism and Eucharist, now today with confirmation, are fully initiated into the church to live out your vocation in the church, to live out how you will embrace Jesus' teachings. And you need this Eucharist to carry on. If you don't, like Elijah, you'll find yourself at the end of your rope. You'll find yourself driven to despair. These young people have gifts and talents. You know that. They have great energy. But you young people have something even more important. You have incredible faith. And our church needs you to live that faith today. As I mentioned, these young people have written some letters for me and I'm just going to read you about three snippets of each of the four questions. So I'm not going to read all 53 letters. I know that disappoints you. Okay? And I try not to give them away. I don't want to embarrass someone. But I just want you to hear the faith because the faith in these letters 
is incredible. And it's something that not only, not, only, not only to be proud of in these young people, but in U.S. families and as parishes, doing such an incredible job of planting the seed and nurturing it. First question I ask, what does confirmation mean to you? One person writes, confirmation means becoming a true member of the Catholic Church, saying, I myself want this for my life. I want to be confirmed to deepen my relationship with Jesus and to grow as a Catholic. Another, confirmation means one step closer to becoming God's servant, and I would like to become closer to God to help me with my struggles and to be freed from sin, so I will be choosing to be confirmed. A third, confirmation means taking a step forward in my Catholic faith and gaining the courage to help others along their journey. Notice they're talking about a relationship with God in the church that's not static, one that's growing and developing and maturing and deepening and embracing their part in the relationship. Second question I asked was about their saint's name. One person writes, St. Teresa of the Andes is the patron saint of joy and young people. I chose her as my saint because I hope that one day I can be remembered for the joy I brought people and the positive impact I made on them. I like that. Another, I chose St. Tarsisius because I want the strength and courage that he had to protect the Eucharist and his faith. A third, St. Sebastian really stood out to me because of his incredible willpower, endurance, and passion for God. These are some things that I am trying to achieve in my personal life. Notice when they talk about their saints, they talk about identifying qualities, attributes, virtues in these saints that they want to imitate in their lives. We need heroes. We need role models in our lives. The world knows this. The problem is the world wants to tell us who our role models ought to be. And remember this. Just because someone is a great athlete doesn't make them a scripture scholar. Just because someone is a great singer, can sell out all kinds of crowds, doesn't make them a theologian. Just because someone is a politician who knows how to get votes should not make them your pastor. They want to be. You hear all these people all today talking about, I have to use my platform for this. I have to use my platform for that. What platform? This is our platform. The altar. The ambo. Christ at the center. Not me. Not you. But Christ. Young people need role models. But not the ones the world holds up. But the ones the church holds up in these saints. The third question I asked them was about their sponsors. One person writes, my grandpa is serving as my sponsor. He has been a faithful member of the church throughout his life. Every time I see him, I can see his life, his faith, and, de- and that he lives his faith and dedicates much of his life to serving others through Jesus. Another, I chose my sister. She is a great role model to me. She teaches me to be holy, strong, brave, and has influenced the way I am today. A third, I have chosen my preschool religious ed teacher as my confirmation sponsor. She has been a part of my life since I was two years old and is a faithful Catholic that I look up to. She is an important person in my life and I know she will always be there for me. Notice when they talk about their sponsors, they feel valued by these people. When our faith is authentic, it reflects not only in our relationship to God, but our relationships with one another. The final question I asked them was about their service hours. One person writes, I have volunteered at Vacation Bible School. I loved working with the kids and helping them with their faith, showing them that God loves them. It really showed me how good God is. Another, my service hours mostly considered a volunteering at St. Mary of the Woods, spending some time with the sisters in health care. Even though it is a small act to talk to the sisters, I could tell how happy it made them feel. Seeing the joy in their faces started to fill me with the same joy. And finally, I have been an altar server for years within my church, but I recently started volunteering at a soup kitchen. I feel like I am not only helping people, but I am helping God. I think this is helping God because I am spreading his love and patience that he shows us. Notice in their service hours, they're not doing great things. They're just being themselves, doing simple things, but making a profound difference in the lives of others. Those are pretty good letters. You think so? Y'all are doing a great job. You are doing great jobs as families and parishes. Keep up the great work. Now I get to the third, third um, part of my homily. And I, I just told these young people and their sponsors earlier, this is my first confirmation for the, for the new year. We kind of, I kind of look at August until the end of June to mid-June as my year. So you're my guinea pigs. That's the point here, okay? You're my guinea pigs as I do this new theme, okay? And so 
and I always try to think about a theme, and, and the one that hit me as I prayed and reflected the last few weeks is in 2025, in just a few weeks, we're going to have what's called a jubilee year. Every 25 years, we have a jubilee year. It goes back to Old Testament times. In the Old Testament, they'd have, a, they'd have what's called a, a jubilee for atonement. How to atone, how to new beginning, how to, you know, where there was the ground, how to make sure the ground was, or how do we free prisoners, or how do we forgive debts, or how do we make things right, things that seemed like they couldn't be set right, how to have this opportunity to kind of reset. And the early church started using this sense of jubilee as a way to how to renew, how to atone, how to reset. It used to be back in the 1300s, it was every 100 years. Then it became every 50 years. Now it's every 25 years. Okay? So here in 2025, we're going to have a Jubilee year. It's a sense of new beginning. And what I like about it is it kind of connects to confirmation this way. Confirmation day is kind of a new beginning. You're fully initiated today. It's a day you'll never have again. You'll never be fully initiated again. You're fully initiated today. It's a new beginning. Reflect on how you want to use this new beginning. And also, every time we go to confession, we go to confession, God restores us to our baptismal dignity. It's a new beginning. We have all sorts of new beginnings. All right? But also, Jubilee is a new beginning. It's a year that we can reflect on how we are called to renew the earth, renew our own selves, and help renew the world. This year's theme, for the, the theme for this 2025, the Jubilee, is Pilgrims of Hope. And so to you young people, what I'd like, I want to invite you to think about, how to be a pilgrim of hope. How to be a pilgrim of hope, being fully initiated into the church. You have received the grace of God in baptism. You received the outpouring of the gifts of the Spirit today in confirmation. You have the Eucharist. You have the Word of God. You have prayers you've learned as a Catholic. All these many ways that you are continuing your journey, your spiritual journey, like Elijah, like the apostles, like all those who've gone before us, being nourished and fed by God's grace to bring good news to the world, to a world that is desperately in need of hope. Why? Because we have become so polarized. We've become so focused in on ourselves that we've tried to push God to the side. You know, we live in this very radical individualism world where we want to be our own God. We want to be our own gods. We want to decide for ourselves what our truth is. There are so many ideologies, so many agendas going on, politically, economically, even in religion, that somehow put ourselves at the center, push God to the side, and we wonder why things are so messed up. We wonder why there's so much violence, so much addiction, so much abuse, so much despair, so much depression, so much mental illness because we want to be our own gods and we can't save ourselves. Only God can save us. Only God could save Elijah. Only God could save St. Paul. Only God could save the people Jesus was sent to save and redeem. Only God can save us. As pilgrims of hope, we have to keep Christ at the center. That's really the you don't have to do great things. But if you keep Christ at the center of your lives, rather than your own egos, or let anyone else's agenda or ideology take center of your life, as long as you keep Christ at the center, you're a pilgrim of hope. You can bring peace and healing. You can bring a sense of joy to others if Christ is at the center of your lives. Keep being centered in prayer. Keep be open to how the word of God speaks not only into your ears, but into your hearts. Keep coming back to be nourished and fed by the Eucharist. Stay connected to him. And what a blessing you will be in the lives of others and a blessing you will realize in your gift of faith. You are showing an incredible witness today. You are a sign of great hope to us. Never take that for granted, the difference you make in the world, keeping Christ at the center.
I invite those to be confirmed to please stand. All right, this is your moment, right? You know where we're at. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles, on the day of Pentecost. I do. do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. You all did great. I invite my brother priest to please stand. Join me in this special laying on of hands and blessing, praying for the outpouring of the gifts of the Spirit upon these young people. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite the sponsors to present the candidates for the conferral of the sacrament. Where am I going? Right up there. Yeah. I can't reach you there. Sebastian, be sealed, gift Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Beatrice, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Philip, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Thank you. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Sophia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Philomena, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Kiara, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Jerome, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And Matthew, be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Thank you. Joshua, be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Congrats. Thank you. Patrick, be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Hubert, be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
peace be with you. Congrats. Bernadette, be still with the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Mark, be still with the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Francis, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Congrats. Sebastian, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Sebastian, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Congrats. Veronica, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Francis, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Congrats. Raphael, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congrats. Veronica, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congrats. Expeditus, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Congrats. Joseph, be still give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Congrats. Cecilia, be still give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Congrats. Joseph, be still give the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Tarsicius, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Congrats. Holy power, holy power. Mary Magdalene, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Congrats. Teresa, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Congrats. John the Baptist. John Baptist de La Salle, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thomas Aquinas, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Thank you. Catherine, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Thank you. Theodore, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Philip, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Thank you. Elizabeth, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And your spirit. Congrats. <laughs> Sebastian, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Thank you. Michael, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Luke, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Congrats. Good job. Catherine, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Congrats. Congrats. Hubert, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Congrats. Sebastian, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Good job. Andrew, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Amma, Amma, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Patricia, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Veronica, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congrats. Colette, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Congrats. Claire, be still, give the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Congrats. 
Mary Magdalene, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Having been graced not only in hearing about the faith of these young people, but witnessing their faith as they came forward to receive the outpouring of the Spirit, let us now, through their example, in faith now, present these prayers for our church and our world. For these his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that, planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for their parents and sponsors, that by word and example they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the Holy Church of God, together with Pope, with Francis our Pope, Charles our Archbishop, and all the bishops that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the church may grow and increase in the unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that all people who have one maker and father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters without discrimination of race or nation, and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prepared for an increased vocation to the priesthood and the religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prepared. O oh God, you gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles, and will that through them and their successors, the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faith. Listen favorably to our prayer. And grant that your grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offers for today is number 409, drawn to you. Number 409.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offering of your church. For in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May the of us and the devil to you. So that we may obtain time and time and time to do it, especially in the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. 
with blessed Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles and joyous parties, and with all the saints, for us constant intercession in your presence we rely for a faith. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation be prayer of all. Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm it with an enchanting your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Lord, Charles of our Spirit, the honor of bishops of the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your all. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family who you have summoned before you in your compassion and merciful Father, gather to your To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you from their passing and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be
let us pray. <clears throat> May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank everyone for such a beautiful liturgy, our, our choir, our cantor, our musician. Thank you all so much. Y'all sang so beautifully, so thank you all very, very much. <laughs> our, two, our two confirmandis that lectured, uh, you all did a great job. I hope you continue to do that as a fully initiated in the church. To our servers, thank you all for doing such a great job making us look like we knew what we were doing. So thank you for that, and my brother, priest, and deacon for all your great work. Um, Father Bob, I hope you're okay kind of the, with the, the, the fall there. I don't know if that was because my homily was so inspiring or because he felt it was lacking, and he had to show us what it meant to Jesus pour out his blood for us and, and the fall for us. So Father Bob, are you okay? Very good, okay. Uh, and then we want to make sure the water's cleared up when everybody's coming up here, so everybody's be very, be, be very, very safe. Uh, Tim, to everyone, thank you all for doing such a great job. Uh, to the sponsors, thank you for, well, again, as I told you earlier, for walking with these young people. That's no um, simple matter. That's a great thing you're doing uh, to walk with people. I was at a talk in June about what it means to encounter. To encounter is about relationships. To encounter means to be in relationships. And uh, I remember this wonderful, don't mean to give you another homily, but uh, I mean, the example was given was this, that St. Peter, whenever he was, when Jesus asked him to cast his nets back out and caught all these fish, and Jesus, Peter fell to the knees, of Je fell on his knees to Jesus and said, leave me, I'm a sinful man. Peter's focus was on Jesus. That's why it was such a profound encounter. As compared to the rich man who asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? When Jesus asked him what to do, told him what to do, he walked away sad because his focus was not on Jesus, but stayed on himself. And so as we gather here today, let us make sure that we keep in relationship with Jesus in the center. And you sponsors have done that so wonderfully with these young people. Uh, so thank you for walking with them. To the confirmandis, thank you all for your great witness. May you truly be pilgrims of hope as you continue to bring good news to the world by the witness of your lives in Jesus. Please know my prayers for you, and I beg you, beg you, please pray for me. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.